Hello, welcome back to the channel. I can't quite believe that we're almost at a year of uh, making YouTube videos. So I thought in this video we might explore what we did, what we learned, and maybe what we're thinking for the future. I think when we started the videos, we were kind of initially thinking that we were gonna do maybe one a month. And then I think we very quickly decided to look at it and start try and push ourselves to make one a week. Um, and I think there were a few reasons for that. But it became clear after making the first few that maybe if we made more or more regularly, we'd be able to get an understanding of the videos that work best or just get a general sense of what the, I guess, what the platform was doing. I'm going to bring this in a little bit more one sec. Yeah, fine. The first set of videos, if you like, that we started off with were looking at our expertise. So we're a design agency that's been running nearly 20 years. We use user-centered design and we are specifically looking at brand and digital services, so websites, that kind of thing. And when we're looking at user-centered design, there's a lot of other bits around that. So that's kind of things like accessibility and really kind of placing that user and making decisions for them and with them to try and make better products for them. So we thought most of our videos would initially be around that. And I think that kind of worked well for us to kind of look at a style that we were creating and kind of look at ways of which we were making videos. But again, I guess these videos are being made within our week of work so we did have to look at ways of making them more efficient so like how we write the scripts how we actually physically film them and then what are the kind of takes and like what are the overheads that we started doing i think some of those videos are really good they explain things really well but i think they did take a long time to make. I mean, some of these were taking two or three days to make, and we kind of really needed to get them down to being, being possible to be made in a day. With that, and I guess also looking at the analytics and stuff like that, although very early on, we kind of decided to maybe look at some other options or other types of videos. Thinking about it, we then decided to look at, in effect, founder stories. Unusual stories about how people started their businesses or their brands, or unusual stories about things that maybe even was considered failures that then would be helpful for people to maybe hear about. So some of those stories around, I guess, Patagonia, Ford Edsel, Apple and Blackberry, those kind of videos. And I think they seem to become quite popular. Even more recently, we've kind of been looking at some more branding specific work and I guess looking at values and mission alongside some of the existing videos such as founder stories. The more recent ones, we've managed to get quick at making them. I think we've lost some of the humor in some of the videos, but I guess it's a balance between, you know, getting one out a week, doing the normal working week, and then actually, you know, taking far too long to look for images and things like that in the previous ones. And I guess, like with everything within YouTube, everyone talks about the thumbnails. And I think because we're a design agency, while the thumbnails are important, they're kind of, they're, they're relatively straightforward to make. But there's definitely things that we've learned with regards to those and what is and what isn't successful. For us, I think being, and I think this may be, and you know, maybe people will kind of say differently in the comments and please do share your thoughts on this. I think some of the thumbnails that you see from established channels can be a lot simpler or can have less on them so you know not necessarily they don't have text then maybe they're just uh, there with a hero image of the person and I think that's fine but I think when you're establishing a channel the mixture of text and image is kind of the most important. I think what's surprising generally speaking is that there doesn't seem to be or hasn't been a much of a difference in performance when it comes to whether a thumbnail has a, a, a face on the thumbnail or more is kind of more kind of abstract. I think people seem to be almost as aware of the the logo or the brand 
as much as the face. So I don't know if that's again because you're not an established uh, channel so therefore they're looking at these kind of established things such as brand and maybe that's why that's kind of the case. And then if you look at the, the videos we've done, we've definitely got some videos that are have become far more popular. Our biggest viewership video I think currently is the Blackberry story and how it kind of contrasted with Apple and I'm not sure on the least viewed. Let me just have a quick look. I think the least viewed might be one of our earlier ones or, or actually really relatively recent. So yeah, I think actually our last week's one about Starbucks is probably the one that's kind of got the least views. One of the things that we noticed with regards to, I guess, the success of the videos is that def something definitely happened around about, I don't know, about six months ago in terms of YouTube. Like YouTube was definitely pushing our videos more. And you can see in our graph that we've basically so you got very few views, then a big spike over the course of maybe three months, and then very few views recently. And I think when you look at the comments and things on some of those videos, it seems like our channel and a lot of other smaller channels were being pushed. So I don't know if that's because that was just pre-Olympics and then what's happened on the run up to the Olympics is that maybe advertisements have become more expensive. So they've then gone back to the more guaranteed viewership of more experienced or more um, established channels. So they knew that this advert was going to get this many views. Maybe that's a reason as to why they decided to kind of do that. Or maybe they were just trying a few different things out. But there's definitely a difference between viewerships that we were getting, or, or not necessarily views, but the impressions. Like on some of the videos, we were getting over 90,000 impressions. And now we could be getting up to like three or 400. And I can't honestly say that the content is that different. So I think that's kind of a big difference. So I guess the question is, sorry if you can hear some noise, there's some building works next door. But I guess the, one of the questions is, how do you make more popular videos? And I think no matter what you kind of get, you know, if you kind of look at the videos around on YouTube about how to make videos more popular and things like that, there is obviously this thing about being consistent, keeping quality, making sure your thumbnails are right and your description is right. And I think all of that is true. But I think that just gets you to a base level. I think there's thousands upon thousands of people that are doing that. So I think if there were ways to become more popular or to make something, I guess, work better, I think unfortunately there's a few things. And I, and I, I say unfortunately because I think it perpetuates the idea of popular being popular. So I guess what I mean by that is that you've kind of got to make videos about things in the news. So, or things that already have a following. So I don't think it's uh, particularly surprising that some of the most popular videos we've done have been about some of the biggest brands in the world. We've done about Apple, we've done about Patagonia, and they've all done really well. They've all kind of got into the thousands in terms of viewships. And even more recently, even within the last few videos that we've made where we've only got a few hundred or tens of views, the better performing ones have been ones that have spoken about brands, established brands. And I think that's kind of good, but I think it's also, I think it also kind of highlights that the idea that niche and you know getting a story out there that's unique is a little bit of a red herring. It feels like that might come in time, but I don't think it's like the instant, you know, I don't think you can just come out there and be this unique thing without a lot of help or a lot of good luck. And I think the the other aspect to this and I can, we've mentioned it in one of the videos where really a lot of the videos that are massively popular are from either established people on a different platform. So they already have thousands of followers on a different platform and they're coming to this platform to make content and therefore they have an established community or somehow that video or that person has had exposure to someone who can connect to a large community. So we mentioned the idea um, that they discuss in the Hitmakers book about how effectively if you can get one eyeball that has a million followers and they recommend this video then that's your kind of video success guaranteed. And we don't have that. So I think we're very much beholden to the YouTube algorithm and hoping people see value in 
the videos that we make. And that's kind of one subscriber, one viewer at a time. And I think it's become more and more apparent that that's going to be take a long time to do. So over the next year, I think we are going to try and continue to do one video a week. We're generally going to continue to do work in or trying to do content in the same kind of area. And I think as well as that, I think what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and start making a course through the video. So every now and again, there might be a, a, a video of a, a, a section of a course, and then we might have a few more videos about the things you've already been seeing. And then there might be another like part two of the course. And I think we're going to build that up slowly over the year. So hopefully then we'll put that into a, a playlist and someone eventually will be able to kind of go through all of those parts and get a sense of a, a course around branding, values and purpose. And I think then we're hopefully going to be adding value for people and hopefully that'll help grow the channel a bit more. But you know, equally, we have got a few subscribers, which we're incredibly grateful for. Um, and it'd be really good to understand what you'd like to see, you know, within the realms of what we have already put out. Are there things that have been good that you've really enjoyed? Other things you'd like to see more of or other things you'd like to see less of? Uh, do let us know in the comments. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting year. It's definitely been challenging to be able to do it all while kind of doing day work as well. I hope you've enjoyed them. We're going to continue to post weekly. Do subscribe if this is the first time you've kind of visited the channel and we'll stay curious and we'll see you in the next one.